Hey guys, it's Jacob from Living Healthy Every Day. Are you getting enough fat in your diet? So back in the 1950s, there was a big scare going on with a lot of people getting heart attacks. And so the government quickly rushed to find out why there were heart attacks going on. And so in the 1960s, they deemed that men who ate high amounts of saturated fats uh, were more likely prone to get heart attacks. And they carried that over to the 1970s where they applied this to children and women. And before you knew it, uh, the, my, the uh, food pyramid of the USDA, they switched to um, high amounts of grains, whole grains, and low amounts of fats. So everything became started to become low fat, where all the uh, companies loved, all the, the, the food companies love this because they can mass produce uh, lots of low fat, no fat kind of carbohydrates and uh, junk foods and just a lot of processed foods were able to become produced. And when you replace fat, when you, when you take out fat, you have to replace it with something. You know, so they started replacing it with trans fats. They started replacing it with another macronutrient, uh, more carbs. They've been using fructose, which fructose has now been shown to produce uh, fat in the liver. And so over the years, the idea was that saturated fat caused more heart attacks. And what we're finding out now is that saturated fat may not be the problem. Uh, actually, in the blood, Saturated fat doesn't become saturated fat. When you eat saturated fat, you don't produce saturated fat in the body. Uh, and what happens is when you eat carbs and sugar, your body will produce saturated fat. Um, and saturated fat uh, is good for the hormones and things like that. I'll get more into that later in this video. But the problem relies in our diet has been in way too, eating way too many carbs. A uh, hundred years ago, the average American, the average person would eat about five pounds of sugar per year. And now that's reaching about 150 pounds of sugar per year, which is devastating. And we've seen rise in diabetes, insulin resistance, metabolic diseases, heart diseases, um, obese, obesity. Uh, so that, that's been changing over years. And Going on statins, lowering cholesterol hasn't been changing everything. Actually, the USDA last year uh, reversed their statement on cholesterol, saying, uh, 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 I'm paraphrasing, the cholesterol is uh, a nutrient of not to be concerned about, uh, which means disregard it. Disregard what we said for tens of years and put people on statins to try to lower cholesterol because uh, cholesterol might actually be, you look at HDL and LDL, they're two different things. HDL is said to be the good cholesterol when we're not really sure about that. And LDL is the bad cholesterol. We're not really sure about the either. You got to look at LDLC, which is uh, the count. And then the LDLP, which is the particle size. Uh, so that's a different video than this one. This video is about reducing your carbohydrate intake and increasing your fat intake. Because what studies have been showing is metabolic diseases have been reversing I'm saying reversing, like curing type 2 diabetes and insulin resistance by going on a essentially a ketogenic diet, which is going high on um, fats. And let's talk about what fats may be good for you. The good kind of fats are probably the ones that are found in, or that, that's been shown to be beneficial, are the ones that are in uh, uh, saturated fats, um, saturated uh grass-fed meats, organic grass-fed meats, ghee, ghee is something that I like to eat. Um, and the reason why saturated fats are very good for you, uh, where they've said they've been bad, is that they don't oxidize quickly. So bad fats are like vegetable oils, soybean oil, sunflower oil. Those oxidize very quickly once they're exposed to heat, light, oxygen, they become oxidized, which causes inflammation in the body. Inflammation in the body leads to all sorts of uh, diseases and symptoms. And of course, insulin resistance, diabetes, so many different things, heart disease. And so we don't want oxidization, oxidization in our body. Um, well, we do want limited amounts for certain processes in our bodies, but not from the dietary fat we eat. Um, and so that's why you need to eat healthy fats. So saturated fats, like uh, like I said, uh, ghee and uh, uh, and um, <clears throat> uh, 
organic pasture raised uh, meats are, are very healthy saturated fats. And we want uh, polyunsaturated fats uh, like avocado oil and uh, olive oil is very good. Another good saturated fat is coconut oil. Coconut oil and their medium chain triglycerides are very healthy. Um, but I'd be skeptic about coconut oil uh, and palm oil because they've also been shown to increase fat in the liver. So there's some evidence wavering there. But the problem is when we're eating too many carbs and people are carb loading before the races, they're, they, they have an addiction to sugar where they're eating tons and tons of carbs. And so when you eat all these carbs, you become fat, you can become insulin resistant, you spike up your glucose, your insulin has to kick in and store all that glucose as energy. And how is it stored as energy? Well, it stores it as fat to use as a, at a later time. So the pre problem why people are really hungry uh, all the time is because they're, they're, they're eating so much and they're not eating nutrient dense meals. And so what we need to do is if you want to become more mentally focused uh, is to raise the ketones in your body and cut out sugar uh, that keeps spiking, spiking your insulin in your body uh, and making you dip in energy, raise in energy, dip in energy, which can give you glucose, uh, a glucose roller coaster, an insulin roller coaster. And it, it kind of feels awful. You get those dips uh, throughout the day where you, you need to eat, keep eating sugar or candy or chocolate just to stay awake and keep going and you notice huge dips. Well, when you're on a ketogenic diet or a high fat diet, um, you become more stabilized you, 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 uh, because all, carbohyd all carbohydrates are different. And so what we found is, that, I mean, all calories are different. What we found is carbohydrates give you spikes in energy, uh, which sp with huge crashes, but fats uh, will give you sustained energy for a longer period of time. It takes a, about three to four days to get that sustained energy um, once you start eating high fat amounts of fats. And so what you can do is start a ketogenic diet or something similar to a ketogenic diet, at least cut down on your carbs to 20% of your meals are carbs. And so what you want is a ton of fiber, uh, which is lots of uh, vegetables, non-starchy vegetables to help create butyrate for your, uh, to feed your bacteria to create butyrate for energy. You want uh, about large percent of your diet to be fats. A lar large percent of your diet, about 30 to 40% uh, can go up to 50%. Uh, most of it vegetables, and then another 30, 40% to be protein. Uh, and what studies have been showing is because most people think lean protein is good for them. Uh, lean protein like chicken. Um, and lean protein is good for you. But the problem with chicken is most, most chicken, unless you find a chicken that is very tiny <laughs> uh, and has been raised on uh, grass and insects and things like that. Most chicken is fed grain and grain is high in omega-6s. Omega-6s are inflammatory in our body. Uh, the average diet, uh, American diet, the SAD diet, standard American diet, or I like to call the MAD diet, the, the modern American diet, uh, is high in omega-6s and we have way too many omega-6s, about 16 to 1 ratio of omega-6s to omega-3s. And omega-3s are really good for reducing inflammation in our body. They're essential fatty acids that we need for our brain, for reducing inflammation. But when you build up too many uh, omega-6s, you get all these inflammatory disorders, metabolic disorders. So the problem with chicken is that they're raised on grains that are high in inflammatory markers or inflammatory uh, fats, uh, which pass over to the meat, which can pass over to you. And essentially you're eating highly inflammatory chicken which you don't need if you've got an autoimmune disorder or any kind of inflammation in your body. Uh, and inflammation is good for your body. You need inflammation. Let's say you have a response to a damage of getting hurt. You need that inflammatory response to protect you. Uh, but if you have chronic illnesses, you obviously want to get rid of inflammation so your body can heal. And that's covered in other videos and on my blog. Uh, and so you need lean meat. So you need fat, vegetables and lean meat. You don't necessarily need carbs. There's been studies shown, showing that people, uh, they, they took these people and they didn't eat any carbs and they were able to st sustain a healthy life with uh, ma micro uh, nutrient dense meals, uh, macronutrient dense meals, but without the carbs, those macros weren't there. 
So this is really a call to action to you to cut down on carbs because they can cause metabolic diseases and increase your fat intake because they're no longer heavily linked to uh, metabolic diseases as we once thought they were. So I hope you learned something new about saturated fat, um, healthy fats, omegas, so omegas like uh, fish oil. I didn't, I didn't cover that. I'll cover that in a different uh, topic, in a different video because it's very important. Uh, and go on something that is a higher fat diet. I, I encourage you to at least try it and see how you feel. And report back to me. Let me know in the comments if that worked for you. If you, if you feel better on a uh, high carbohydrate diet. I know some people do feel better on a high carbohydrate, high carbohydrate diet. I know uh, some vegans who feel better on a high carbohydrate diet, but I feel more loosey goosey, happy and prozac -y on a high fat diet, especially a high saturated fat diet. So thanks guys for watching and stay beautiful.